Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about a discovery of what seems to be yet another miniature moon of our planet Earth. And at the same time the subject also seems to be the smallest discovered so far. So let's talk about this quasi moon of Earth and welcome to What The Man. Now when we talk about moons, it's actually kind of difficult to really define what a moon is. So for example, when we look at our own moon, it is very different from moons of Jupiter and Saturn. And even though the size and the mass of moons of Jupiter are somewhat similar to the moon that we have, their origins and also their composition are extremely different. Our moon is actually a lot more similar to so-called Charon, the partner of the beautiful Pluto that you can see right there behind it. So in this sense, there is actually no true definition to what a moon is, but normally we define moons as satellites of planets. And here is roughly what this would look like in Universe Sandbox. So as you can see, the moon is obviously orbiting around planet Earth. But we also have these so-called quasi-satellites or temporary moons. As a matter of fact, there's quite a lot of them. One of these objects, known as 2016 HO3, is right here. We've discovered this back in 2016 and as you can see it does seem to appear as if it's orbiting our planet and it's thus known as a quasi-satellite. But it's not going to be doing this forever because it's actually simply orbiting the sun but once in a while comes close enough to planet earth that it does appear to have an orbit around it. And China is even planning a mission to this object. In 2024 they're thinking of trying to retrieve a few samples and returning them back to earth. A few other quasi-moons have even stranger orbits, so this one right here, as you can see, is following the yellow path, and it's technically also a quasi-moon, but none of these are stable orbits, and at some point they'll actually either completely move into a different part of the solar system, or will probably disappear altogether by crashing into something. And so it shouldn't really be a surprise that we've discovered yet another one of these rocks in a somewhat quasi-permanent orbit around the planet. It's been here since 2018, at least, and it's actually really small, possibly as small as 1 meter or approximately 3 feet across. And this rock was only discovered very recently, only in February of 2020, using the telescopes from the so-called Mount Lemmon Observatory in Arizona. It's currently designated as 2020 CD3, and it does have this very peculiar and somewhat chaotic orbit as you can see right here. And this orbit suggests to us that this object is probably only going to stay here for maybe a few more months, possibly a year. But we don't really know what's going to happen to it afterwards yet. And this is actually the second such object discovered, the so-called temporary quasi-satellite. First one was discovered in 2006 and it did actually approach Earth several times. Here's what the orbit of this object looked like uh, back in the 90s, and as you can see, it approached Earth uh, sometimes a little bit too close, sometimes a little bit farther away, and continued doing so until eventually it got kicked out of the system because of the interaction with the moon as well. Now, these objects are really interesting because first of all, well, these are really ancient samples from the beginning of the solar system. These are basically asteroids that were created really, really uh, early. And because they do come so close to planet Earth, it's quite possible for us to try to capture one one day. At the same time, these objects help us understand how our moon influences the orbits of these different asteroids, and thus presents an opportunity for us to study orbital interactions and how the moon protects Earth from various asteroids. And even though the object 2020 CD3 has been with us for about two years now, it might already actually be on the way out. And because this is the smallest object discovered so far with a size of only a few feet, this really gives you an idea of how good we became at detecting these asteroids orbiting around a planet or possibly approaching and maybe even colliding with the planet. So we're definitely getting much, much better at detecting asteroids that could be very dangerous and also actually finding ways to redirect them as well. There are a few studies that came out recently that have established really interesting techniques at how we could potentially redirect asteroids by calculating their orbits years ahead and then slightly nudging them with a small rocket in order for them to actually go somewhere else. But as I mentioned previously, it's still somewhat challenging for us to define what an actual moon is. Now, for example, when it comes to different objects in the similar orbit around the sun, there are a few more locations, like these Lagrange points right here, that can potentially possess actual permanent objects. We usually refer to these objects orbiting in this region as Trojans. The most famous Trojans are all located in the orbit of Jupiter because it's the most massive planet and it's able to maintain their um, orbital parameters much better. But here you'll see that there are quite a lot of these Trojans in both of these Lagrange point locations. And some of them we're actually going to be investigating with some of the future NASA missions, but Earth also has at least one Trojan we're aware of. 
the object known as 2010 TK7. This object is actually really large. It's approximately 300 meters or about 1000 feet in size. And if this were to collide with Earth, well, let's just say it would probably cause major destruction and a lot of climatic changes. But the question here becomes, does this also constitute a kind of a moon? Because technically, this is what its orbit looks like around planet Earth. It does increase and decrease in size quite dramatically, and it's more or less permanent because of the location known as the Lagrange point. And if so, this would definitely make this the second permanent moon around Earth. Likewise, only about two years ago, we've discovered that in the same points, the L4 and L5 Lagrange points, there are these so-called Kordilevsky clouds. These are essentially collections of smaller rocks and a lot of various dust that is visible from planet Earth, and in some sense is also representative of what's happening around uh, the Trojan points of Jupiter. Would we also call this some sort of a satellite as well? First, this would imply that there are possibly a lot more of these objects in these regions that we haven't discovered yet. And second, this would also imply that we have this unusual dust cloud in orbit around planet Earth. Not really a ring, but not really an asteroid either. So this could be a completely new phenomenon and possibly all of the other planets have them as well. Kordilevsky clouds have actually been named so-called hidden Earth moons. So in some sense, some scientists do actually believe that we should be naming these moons as well. And what this of course suggests is that there are just a lot of different quasi-satellites and a lot of different satellites in general. So the definition for the moon that we have right now, or definition of moons in general, is just not really well defined. We definitely need to reassess on what exactly do we mean when we say a moon of a planet, and we also need to redefine what exactly all of these other objects are, because calling them quasi-satellites is not particularly exciting. And interestingly, every time we discover these objects, they usually come up in the media as the so-called second moon of Earth, because it really feels like these are moons, but at the same time, we just don't really have a better way of calling them yet. And one of the reasons why we don't have a better definition for them is because we don't really know where they came from. If their origin is somehow related to what happened to Earth in the past, then maybe these are moons of Earth. But if these are just asteroids that got captured by Earth, then, well, they're technically just passerbys. Travelers going around the solar system creating these beautiful patterns, but they're probably going to, at some point, go somewhere else. But anyway, until we discover something else about various moons, or at least go and explore one, and possibly even retrieve a sample from one, that's really it. Thank you so much for watching, come back tomorrow to learn something else, share this video with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe even subscribe. But also, possibly support this channel on Patreon, because it does help me quite a lot. Or alternatively, you can also buy this beautiful t-shirt that I'm wearing right now, that alternatively comes as a pillow or as a hoodie. Either way, thank you so much, I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.